Okay, uh, today I'm going to show you how to uh, mix the uh, glaze. Um, in my previous video, I told you that uh, the glaze is made out of uh, uh, mineral chemical powder, um, which is uh, added to the water. So uh, I'm going to show you how I mix my, one of my uh, glaze. Um, before I started, uh, I had to uh, wear a uh, mask. This is a heavy duty mask that when I mix in the, the uh, glazes. Um, then, um, let me show you. I have a, a bucket of water here. Okay. I need to add some water to it. Okay, so I will go ahead and add some water to the bucket. Today I'm going to mix about uh, 10,000 gram of uh, the glaze is called matte black. It's a black. It's going to be uh, turned black. Um, before I do that, I have to dump the uh, glaze into my storage. It's empty. That's all the uh, storage chemicals that uh, uh, we have a very nice uh, glaze uh, mixing table here all different uh, chemical in here so it's easy to uh, to reach and now I'm wearing my mask before I do it Okay, um, this is my recipe. I we usually print out a recipe like this um, the, with the different uh, grams, like 10,000, 25,000, uh, 15,000 grams, or uh, 12,000 grams. So today I'm gonna mix about uh, 10,000 grams of uh, matte black. So this is my list. Uh, all the uh, chemicals that I need is castor, uh, whitein, dynamite, EPK, cobalt carbonate, and uh, red iron oxide. Okay. Um, also, here is a very nice digital scale that uh, is very uh, good for measuring. And uh, it's very accurate. Okay, the uh, first one is the custard foul spot. That's the uh, although I just. Uh, in this storage, so I'm going to use it um, before because I'm going to wear my mask, so I won't be able to talk.
So I weighed about 5,730 grams of uh, caster. Uh, let me bring my camera closer so you will be able to see the uh, digit. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, dump it in this bucket here. Okay. This is the second ingredient, uh, 320 of uh, whiting. The uh, third ingredient, 950 of uh, dolomite. Uh, 3,000 gram of uh, EPK.
340 grams of uh, cobalt carbonate. And 400 grams of uh, red iron oxide. So I'm done with my uh, weighing of all the chemicals. So there's a tip here, uh, when I'm measuring the white powder, I'm using this white container. And when I'm weighing the uh, colorant, copper carbonate, red iron oxide, I'm using this one so that they don't mess up. And uh, also after i done with the measuring, I usually have a check mark a check mark so that I don't uh, mess up because sometimes if you uh, uh, you in the middle of something or uh, someone uh, interrupt you you might forget so uh, after I wait and, and put, put it in I use a, a pen or pencil to uh, check mark it so that I don't uh, miss anything that's uh, that's very good uh, and that's very important you don't uh, add extra ingredient or you missing any ingredient. Okay, now I'm ready to uh, to mix. Use the blender, not blender, the the beater.
So I'm done with the uh, mixing with the water. But uh, before we could use it, we need, still need to uh, screen it so that uh, all the uh, uh, chunk or all the uh, a larger particle will filter out. So I will show you how I screen it. So this is our uh, matte black bucket here. Uh, we already have uh, some of them, but uh, the level is low, so I have to add a little bit more uh, matte black glaze in this bucket. And this is the uh, uh, screen that uh, we use to uh, filter the, the uh, big chunk or some kind of uh, uh, large particle so that uh, the glaze is uh, it's even. Actually, this is pretty good. I don't have very many uh, uh, big particles, so this is very good and easy to use. And I use about 60 mesh, 60, 60 mesh, so all the uh, uh, powders can go through easily. And uh, I think 60 should be enough, uh, fine enough for uh, glazing, even if you want to spray your yeah, your glaze. And then uh, I'm going to uh, stir a little bit so to check the whole uh, glaze, see if it's uh, at the uh, right thickness. Actually, yeah, the glaze a bit is a bit uh, too thick, so I have to add a little bit of water to it. This looks better. Uh, I usually uh, tell my students uh, before they dip their pieces in the glaze, always check the right, since the glaze has is the uh, at the right thickness stage. And uh, uh, how do you check it? Uh, usually, this is the, the method I tell my student. Uh, use your dry fingers, okay, and dip it in the glaze. 
And uh, if the glaze is still showing uh, your texture, but uh, it's not very easy to see the texture, that's the right uh, thickness of the glaze. And uh, for experienced uh, powder, they can just uh, use the eye to check it, and uh, they will be able to, uh, to see if that's the right uh, thickness of the glaze. But uh, if you are a beginner, uh, use a fingertip, dry fingertip to dip it in the water. After you stir it, dip it in the, in the uh, glaze and uh, see if the glaze is showing. Still, you can see a little bit of uh, the texture, but uh, uh, you don't see uh, too much of your finger. Like this part, now it's a little bit too thin. Okay, too thin because I shake it up. But uh, if you dip it in, and uh, it still covers your uh, your texture, and um, show a little bit the tip of your the, the higher part of your texture. That's the right thickness. Okay, so this grease mixing is done. Uh, this bucket of uh, uh, matte black grease is ready to go. So this is the uh, all the glazes uh, at the studio of uh, Sunnyvale, Sunnyvale Community Center. This is where I work. I teach and also uh, I act as I work as the kiln technician, uh, mixing all the chemicals and fire firing st all the students' work. Uh, now we have about seventeen buckets of uh, different glazes and uh, all the uh, glaze samples up there on the wall to show the people and uh, we do both high fire oxidation and uh, reduction most of people do only one kind of uh, firing but we do both oxidation and uh, reduction and uh, we fire to contain maybe ten and a half, sometimes uh, even harder than uh, like cone 11. Okay, thanks for watching.